Hey guys, so uh, welcome to our second session of Mindset Matters. Uh, so this is, uh, I'm Sonia Pinto, uh, Certified Digestive Health Coach and Nutrition Specialist. And this is Karen, I should have introduced her first, but well, this is Karen. <laughs> She is a master health coach. Yeah. So she just got certified. Master today, life coach. Yes. Uh, life coach. Yeah. Sorry. So, uh, so we're going to be talking about mindset matters and what are the roadblocks that we both have faced being patients and survivors of GERD or LPR. So you, I, I'm going to go first because she's going to give the solutions and I'm going to give the roadblocks. So just to put it uh, mildly, uh, when I was diagnosed with GERD after uh, a, a traumatic experience in uh, Germany, when my husband fell ill, when I came back to Australia, they put me on PPIs, which is a proton pump inhibitor uh, to heal my GERD. And that was for two weeks. And then everything was normal. And I went back to a very restrictive GERD diet. And then after a couple of years, I got H. pylori when I was put back again on a triple therapy to heal me from uh, the H. pylori. I was completely healed and I'm completely healed with God's grace. But uh, I have learned a few lessons out of this experience, which I would like to share with you. And one is that uh, I personally like to be medication free. I am not a uh, person who likes to take a lot of medication because of the side effects of every medication that we know about and we don't know about. The other thing is that um, uh, I had a mindset issue initially to give up a lot of the foods uh, which I was uh, used to. Like for instance, uh, my coffee, I was a coffee addict and I would have like four cups of coffee a day. So uh, that was a big issue to give up. I was like, how am I gonna live without my coffee? Then I thought, okay, let me switch to tea. So, and I thought I would have like one cup, one cup a day, but then I had to give it up. And why did I have to give it up? I'll come to that. Then same was for my sugar. I had to have some form of sugar. I was a sugar. I could eat a whole chocolate cake all by myself. And that was my fun with my girlies. We used to go out, all my girlfriends, we used to hang around, all my big, big groups of friends. And we would just party and drink. And well, that was like history. So I had to change my lifestyle. This is not just something which is gonna get healed if you think that you know you just come to us and there's some miracle button that you just press and you're gonna get healed. Well, let me tell you that it's there is there are no shortcuts in life, whether it is getting healed or whether it's doing anything in life. You gotta go the whole way. You gotta follow the process. You cannot just start and then stop in the middle and go back and think, oh, I'm gonna cheat, it's all gonna be okay because a lot of us, most of us actually suffer from something called a loose lower esophageal sphincter. And when that is loose, all the food happens to come up. And that's when you get all your symptoms, whatever symptoms that you have. So I'm going to talk about, yes, that uh, your mindset. Do you have like a, a healing mindset or do you have a mindset which is like, uh, which has a, uh, a stronghold that, oh, I'm not going to, I want to get healed but I'm not prepared to go the whole way or I'm not prepared to give up my um, my pasta. For example, uh, both Karen and I, like Karen is Italian, I'm an Indian, but I love pasta. And uh, I had an Italian friend and uh, he actually introduced me to all the possible pastas. I used to, he had a restaurant and I actually yeah. fell in love with the food and I used to go there. That was my hangout, honestly. So uh, to give up, uh, my favorite food was a real fight. And, uh, and Karen has explained the same thing in the previous video. So, uh, yes, there is a stronghold which was there in my mind. And then I decided that I needed to overcome my, uh, my desires of eating and focus on getting healed and change my mindset and focus from a negative mindset and remove and break that stronghold. There was no way... And the cost, and there was a price to it. The price was going back on medication. Now the issue is, do you want to go back on medication or do you want to live a life like where you can eat within the parameters? You can eat gourmet food. You can eat yummy food. There's plenty of pasta you can eat, which is uh, not necessarily having tomatoes or uh, uh, whatever, all the cream loaded. You, know, you can have, it's okay. It's not going to be the same, but you definitely you got to think about what is important to you, what is critical for your life and where, what are your priorities. You will always have a priority of meeting friends and hanging out, but 
there is a price to pay. So are you willing to pay that price with your life? Are you willing to go for surgery? That's totally your call. I have a couple of clients who still want to uh, continue doing the stuff because they say, oh, I'm not prepared to give up my whatever my gin and tonic or whatever it may be on the weekend and that's totally your call that is a price that you have to pay i have given up alcohol i have given up sugar dairy gluten and you name it and i'm all my giving up my tomatoes my chocolate because i know that i need to live not only for my own self because i want the quality of my life to be good i need to live for my family and i need to give the right values to my family because i don't want my family to be repeating my mistakes or anybody for that matter that is the reason why we are making this video so to raise awareness so uh, yes um, uh, the other thing is uh, just trying to uh, say that okay i'm ready to change is one thing and the willingness to pay the price for that is another thing so i would say that uh, to sum it up um, uh, it is very important to define your goals and identify what is important to you in your life and set your priorities like, right? And uh, once you define your goals and you know why you're doing what you're doing and the reason, you need to have a very strong why. The why should I give this up? And if you have a very strong why, then I don't think anybody needs to convince you. You're going to convince yourself. You're going to be your own best doctor. You don't need Dr. Google or you don't need me or even Karen for that matter. But of course, we are there to help you and guide you because you, there is a process to follow. You can't just, there are no overnight miracles. So uh, yes, is there anything else I want to talk, talk to you about? Uh, yes. And the other thing is that... Uh, it is just not diet alone. There is a mindset which comes to being your mind, your body, and your spirit, three pillars of nutrition, which is what I talk about you know, in my course. So um, it's very important that uh, you understand that as a part of life, like your mind, body, and spirit connection, just fixing your diet alone is not going to help you. So I, come, I would leave you now with Karen, but before that, I would just say, do feel free to contact me and uh, let me know how I could be of help to you and to help you get off medication and live a healthy life. Of course, there are certain uh, diseases where if your doctor says you may need to continue, that's totally your call. I, I am there to help you. So please feel free to contact me. Uh, my name is Sonia Pinto again, and I am on God Digestion and Gut Health is my Instagram handle. And now I leave you with Karen, who's going to continue. Just yeah, time. no, thank you so much. And it's so great to be here with you again. You know, I found your Instagram handle at a time when I really needed it. I needed support. I needed to know that there were other people out there going through the same thing that I was going through. And you were actually a person who told me about not having wheat. When I was initially diagnosed, I was told that bread was okay. And I was living off of bread and honey. And it wasn't until you sort of burst that bubble, but thankfully so, that I gave that up and again was able to move forward on my healing journey. So everyone's story is a little bit different, um, but, let, but let's stay focused here on this concept of mindset. And we hear this term a lot, gets thrown around, you know, you gotta have a good mindset. And it's like, but no one really ever explains what mindset is. And to be honest, it's just a set of beliefs that allow you to make sense of the world and how you assimilate things to yourself. It will influence how you think, how you feel, how you behave in any given situation. And this is why when some people are faced with change or a big life situation, like being diagnosed with GERD or LPR in my case, you know, you're able to confront that change and move through it and thrive and others will kind of flounder and put the hands up in the air and the oh no's like, what do I do? Because they just don't have that ability to change their mindset or to think that, you know, they can really move through this challenge. And you don't have to take my word for it. Um, there is a Stanford psychologist by the name of Carol Dweck who believes that you know, your belief system really plays a big role in what you want and whether you will achieve it or not, because there are two mindsets and you've probably heard this before. I hope you've heard this before, but there's fixed mindsets and growth mindsets. And so if you wow. have a fixed mindset, yeah, have you heard this before, Sonia? I've not heard this before. Honestly, I think this is like really great that you're talking about it. Uh, because you know this from your point of view and so thank you so much for sharing it's really great to know because i come across a lot of clients who are like 
they, I, like I mentioned, you know, they don't have the growth mindset. They're so fixed and they're so rigid, you know. So, yeah. and they want the they, they want the overnight miracle, but they're not willing to change. Right. So, yeah. 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 And unfortunately, like you said, there are no shortcuts. Trust me, I've tried them. There, there are none. <laughs> I wish there was. But when you have yeah. this very fixed mindset, right? You believe that all of your talents, your abilities, everything that you innately have is that's it, right? Like that's what you get and you can't change that. And when you have a growth mindset, you believe that through effort and persistence, you can change your circumstances. You can get better at something. You can get smarter. You can become more talented. And so the same can be said with an illness, right? If you have a fixed mindset and you really believe, hey, these are the cards that I've been dealt, this is what's gonna happen to me, and you succumb to this illness, then chances are you're gonna fight it for the rest of your life. But if you pivot and you have this um, very positive attitude and you look at your current situation and go, okay, well, this is the cards I was dealt, but here's the steps I'm gonna take to change it and have this better quality of life and I believe I can overcome this one day, then indeed you will overcome it. Absolutely, absolutely. It's like when life gives you lemonade, uh, lemons, lemons, you make lemonade. Absolutely, right? right? So oh. to have that is like uh, so critical for, uh, you know, even cancer patients. If you see, there are a lot of overcomers of cancer, you know, and their positive mindset is what helps them believe that they can fight the battle. So the battle actually begins in the mind. Absolutely. Mindset is 80% of the battle always. And yeah. what's really interesting is um, we're a Kung Fu family. So my husband and both of my boys all practice this martial art. So we get a lot of inspiration and sort of guidance on mindset from this discipline. And uh -huh. there's a book that I absolutely love that my husband shared with me. It's um, Zen in the Martial Arts by Joe Hames, H-Y-A-M-S. And there's a quote in here from Bruce Lee that I'm just going to read you so I don't what's your this, but it's so relevant to what we're talking about. The mind is like a fertile garden. It will grow anything you wish to plant, beautiful flowers or weeds. And so it is with successful, healthy thoughts or with negative ones that will, like weeds, strangle out and crowd the others. Do not allow negative thoughts to enter your mind for they are the weeds that strangle confidence. And it's so applicable, right? The second you start to have negative thoughts, it's going to overtake your mind. I was so depressed when I started to read all the information. When I initially started doing my research, everything was like, oh, you've got acid reflux. If you don't take care of it, you're gonna get Barrett's esophagus. You're gonna get cancer, you're gonna die. And it was suffocating me. And I became so depressed and mad at myself mad at myself for drinking, mad at myself for being a caffeine addict and having all that coffee. And I was like, I have no one to blame but myself. I did this to myself. And I had to break that cycle and get out of those negative thoughts and replace them with positive ones so that I could move forward. So if you're in this space right now where you've just recently been diagnosed or you're feeling really down, I will never tell you to bottle up your feelings because that's not good either. But what I love to do is set a timer, put five minutes on your phone and allow yourself to have a pity party just for five minutes, pity party. And when you're done and that timer goes off in five minutes, now it's time for positive thoughts. You had your moment, you were able to deal with your emotions and now we have to move forward. We have to move through that and get those positive thoughts going. Awesome, Karen. I really, Thank really, you. really love this. I think this is so, so, so critical for a lot of people whose thoughts control them. I know a lot of clients who come to me so depressed and so anxious, and I have my ways of handling them to through some mindful uh, practices. But this is definitely a nice way of doing it. Like I also tell them, I sometimes write down your thoughts because it's important to journal down your thoughts, especially if they are they are negative. And then you know, like uh, you know, you're going to come to that, I'm sure. But uh, basically, think positive and you know, imagine that because our gut and our mind is, and our gut and our uh, mind is connected. So our negative thoughts can 
actually impact our gut health and make yeah. us worse. But if you believe in your mind that you're healed and you and you speak it, you know, the words have power. So if you speak that I am healed and you believe in it, then you will be healed and you're like halfway there to your journey. So well, back to you. <laughs> yeah, no, I love that. And I love the idea of speaking it into existence. I say this a lot of times with my clients, right? No matter what you're trying to achieve, speak it into existence and it will come true. So great tip. Um, the second thing I would share with your audience is uh, visualization can be a very powerful technique. And it's something that all the athletes use, right? Like before Tom Brady, well, in, in America, in American football, right? Tom Brady is kind of one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time. I'm not a Patriots fan, but you can't, you know, you can't say he isn't really talented. But before he goes and plays a Super Bowl, he's already won that game in his mind. He already sees himself being the victor and how he's going to do that. So you can apply the same thing to your condition. See yourself healing. Really imagine that your throat doesn't hurt when you swallow, that your nose is cleared or that your heartburn has gone away. See yourself living a normal life, eating normal foods. See yourself really living the life that you want to live and being fully recovered, whatever that looks like for you. And if you use a visualization technique, you can, like I said, this is applicable to anything, right? Once you learn the technique, it's not only going to help you heal from this um, condition, but you can use this to achieve any goal in your life, you know, your career, your relationship, improve your finances, like whatever, it doesn't matter. Anything you want to accomplish, you can just visualize it into fruition. Absolutely. I think that is fabulous. It is such a uh, critical thing to just imagine that you're healed because once you imagine that you're healed, you believe in it. You start yeah. believing in it. And I believe that happiness actually is a state of mind. It is not something which you have to uh, base on your circumstances because circumstances are something which we cannot control. Circumstances keep changing. And if we focus on healing and a happy state of mind, I know somebody would say, well, if I'm in a bad state of mind, how, how do I change it? How do I get that? How do I reach that state? That is something which comes with time, with process, when you learn to master your emotions. And uh, that has a very big role in uh, calming your mind and your body, the, the gut-brain connection. And that we will discuss in our next session. So uh, looking forward to seeing you guys. Uh, you, would you like to take a more, Karen? Oh, sure. The last thing I'll just, just touch on here before we wrap up is gratitude and really being grateful for what you do have will help and have a huge impact on that mindset. So Absolutely. even when I was diagnosed and it was tough and I was angry and I was upset, I still could back up the train for a second and go, you know what? It could have been more serious. Absolutely. It's not cancer. I'm yeah. not dying. Yes. Like really sitting in that and being able to say, I am so glad we caught it when we did. Because if it left untreated, it could have become something more severe. I Absolutely. now was grateful that I had the ability to go out and buy cookbooks or resources that I needed to cook the right foods and to make healthier meals that weren't going to trigger me. You know, there were all these things that I could find true blessings. So I know sometimes it's tough. I love to have a gratitude journal, something you can just take down your thoughts in and really challenge yourself to find the good, the silver lining in the situation so that, you know, you can move on. I think that is spot on. That is so critical to find that silver lining. And I think just being alive and getting up each day and thanking whoever you believe in that you're alive and you're able to walk and move around and function like a normal human being who doesn't have issues. It's just how you overcome it and how you handle it and how you learn to live with it. So it's like your mindset as, as we put it, but definitely matters. And uh, I hope this is, this has helped you. And for further tips on how to manage your gut and brain connection and manage that mindset both, uh, you know, so that will really, uh, make a difference to the whole way you manage your stress levels, which I think is the key because a lot of us get very uh, depressed and that 
increases our stress levels and that increases all the choking and all sorts of feelings. I have a lot of clients who come to me saying, oh, uh, I have that uh, feeling like something is stuck in the base of my throat, which I had that too. I honestly yeah. had that. I think Karen had that too. I had that too. And uh, when I was stressed, it became worse. And when I de-stressed myself, and I just learned to let go. And for me, it's let God. So when I did that, it just ran away and praise God, it's never come back. So it definitely has a lot to do with your mindful practices and the way you, your attitude, your attitude. Yeah. Like she said, it is the, it's an overcomer's attitude. It is where your, your focus is not on sickness, but your focus is on health and healing. Yeah. yeah? But change is hard. Right. And so that's why people would come to us, right? Because if you've tried to do this and change your mindset on your own, or you've tried to get the diet and the recipes just right, and it's still not working, you know, that's when you would come to either one of us for our specialties, Absolutely. because Absolutely. sometimes you do just need a little extra support. You need an accountability partner. You need someone to help you through the tough days because there will be tough days, right? So yes, there will be days when you want to give in and you want to go out and indulge but then there is a process where you have to follow what is called an elimination diet you have to detox your body and then you will have to gradually reintroduce certain foods to see how they work for you now that is something you may or may not know well i honestly consulted dr google that reminds me and thank god i'm talking about it and um, when I consulted Dr. Google, yes, I was eliminating a lot of foods, but I was also doing a lot of wrong stuff. Like I was, for example, having a lot of celery juice to detox my body and that gave me parasites in my tummy. So just for, you know, just to let you guys know, do not blindly follow everything that you see. Now I had to then take some uh, micro, microbial herbs to detox my body from the parasites. So just to give you an example. So it's like we cannot, that is why it's important to, uh, yes, you can definitely follow Dr. Google, but it's important to come to someone who is a specialist, who knows what they're talking about, who have the credentials and who know exactly what to do and how to do it and how to go about it. So whether it's for your mindset, please do approach Karen if you have any uh, negative thoughts or you have any fears. And if you have any like uh, restrictions or strongholds in your mind about uh, like anxiety and stuff and how to manage that, please do come to me. And I'm sure we could value add to your life in many more ways than just one. Yeah. So looking forward to hearing from you guys. And once again, I'm Sonia Pinto and uh, you have my Instagram handle. I am God digestion and the underscore digestion underscore uh, gut health. That is my handle. And I'm on Facebook too. And Karen is Karen Freeland. She is now go for it, Karen. Yeah. Yeah. You can find me on Instagram at Karen Freeland. It's Karen with an I, or you can check out my website, karenfreeland.com. Check out the life coaching tab for details on that or on Facebook, Karen Freeland life coaching. So we would be more than happy to chat with you, understand your specific situation and figure out a game plan for what would work for you. And Taylor make a program for you, a protocol, a healing protocol for you, a diet for me with me. It will be a diet related healing protocol to the end of your healing journey. So hopefully you will go back a happier person. That's our aim. Absolutely. They will. Thank you very much, guys. See, See you ya. soon. Bye. Bye.